What's good, what's good, what's good? What's going on? As people file in, I just broke my nail. It's crazy. Waiting for my man Alan to join. What's good, man? Yeah, what's the word? What's the word? Nothing much, man. Nothing much. Just on this day, we are rocking. What's good, man? Hey, welcome to the Soapbox Podcast, Soapbox Nation Live. My name, my name is TJ. Oh, I was do that over again. That was that was kind of bad. Hey, welcome to Soapbox Nation Live. I'm your host, DJ Legacy. I am here, joined with. My man, my co-host, Alan York on our IG Live. What's good, Alan? How you doing? Yo, peace, 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 bro. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. How you? Yo, man, I'm good. I'm not going to lie. Uh, today, I knew I kind of anticipated this day. I know that it, was, it marks the one-year anniversary of the death, of the tragic death of Kobe Bryant and uh, and his daughter, Gianna, and, and the victims in the helicopter crash. So I knew I wanted to... Uh, touch base on it and talk about it, and I'm glad that you were able to, you know, join me so that we can continue this. Uh, you know, I guess we would call it a, a spinoff of the Soapbox Podcast, uh, where we're engaging with uh, Soapbox Nation, man. So I appreciate you you checking in. Appreciate you having me. You already know. Yeah. So I had to for those who are are watchers. I had to rep the old, you know, the old uh, Kobe Slam cover. Sure, just to just to you know, made me feel good today. All all day, as we remember, uh, someone who was not just a legend on the basketball court, but an inspiration to to so many, including myself. I've said it many times that if there is no soapbox podcast without the influence and the inspiration of Kobe Bryant, I mean, Kobe to me, you know, growing up, you know, is has been was. He was the alternative because when I when, when I was younger, um, all of my friends, right, were all into AI, right? They were Allen Iverson heads. Kobe was, you know, he they had, he had the braids. Allen Iverson was like the epitome of of cool back then, like you know the sneakers, the commercials, like the tattoos, and Kobe just had the fro, and he was just like a regular, you know, just a, like a regular dude, but he was good, and so. Um, me, I've never been one to claim that I'm like hood or, or street or any of that kind of stuff or whatever, even in my environment. But I resonated with Kobe because he didn't have to put on. Like he was just he kind of kept to himself in the early stages of his career. And then he, you know, he was teaming with Shaq, the late, you know, with the Lakers. And he was just a um, you know, the whole fro. I had a mini fro back in the day. So I was like, oh, okay, he's just just like me. So uh, I, I identified with him uh, really quick, even when I saw his highlights when he got uh, drafted by the Charlotte Hornets um, on, on, on draft night, and then he got traded to the Lakers. You know, just something about him for me in the beginning stages that I, just resonates with me. When I, I think it was one of the first NBA drafts I watched, or you know, and seen, and it was like, oh, this is coming straight from high school. I was like, all right. Saw some of his highlights. I was like, all right, this dude is dope. And everybody, everybody touted him as the next, as the next Jordan. So, um, but yeah, I, I really take in a liking. So, what, what was your fandom like with Kobe? Hey, uh, uh, in the in the early stages, I know you you had a, a couple bars in your lyrics about Kobe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was uh, I was a fan. I was I was definitely I was definitely a huge AI fan especially because that that became a point of reference just for everyday life when I would say, you know, my name is Alan, right? And mm -hmm. the, the closest the closest uh, 
spelling reference I had was to Allen Iverson because everyone was yeah, yeah. Him, right. So that was you know so that was kind of the easy correlation. But I was always one of those people that as well that uh, since the AI fandom came so big, everybody had the braids, right? Yeah. And for me, it was like I always into a trap where I just look like everybody else. So I grew my <laughs> hair out and I had the fro, yeah. the crazy fro. But the only other person who had the fro like that was Kobe. So it kind of gave me like another, you know, a point of reference. When you're young, you you know, point of references are kind of important and you don't even really realize it. So in the my whole middle school for the for the majority of three years, I probably like two two, two and a half Two and a half of those years, I had a yeah. big, big Kobe fro. And then even like my first year and a half of high school, I had the big Kobe fro. So just like aesthetically, you can kind of see the influence. But then also it was just like for me, I've always related to uh, even though he was touted the next such and such, like yeah. he had to earn everything. And for another one, I was a big, huge Eddie Jones fan, right? And yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I heard Eddie Jones. I love, yeah. Eddie. I love his game. Kobe really couldn't get off the bench uh, in front of Eddie for the for the first year and a half too. So, the, so the fact that his trajectory kind of started as you know, even though you may think, and this is what the world may think, you're what you're gonna be. You're still gonna have to grind it out every single day to prove, not even that you're the best at to even start. Like you have to prove that you're even one of the top five players on your team. So, yeah. you know, I always thought that that was ill for me to be like, you know, it doesn't matter what you think, how how talented you are. You still got to go out there. You got to prove it. So I think early on, that's what I really took to him being, you know, uh, the sixth man of the year and then, and then moving to the starting lineup. And then the dunk contest was big. Um, yeah. So early, that's, that's my early, early stages of my fandom with Kobe. And then it just kind of, uh, you know, kind of bled off from there. So. Yeah, his game, his game, I know, I know when, you know, being a younger kid and watching that, I was just like in awe. Like, I wasn't, I missed the Michael Jordan stuff. Like, I didn't, I wasn't into basketball. Um, I think the last, I, I saw the NBA Finals with the Supersonics, mm -hmm. and then I saw the NBA Finals with the Jazz. So I kind of missed, like, the, the height. I was too young for that, the height. I was really into, like, wrestling and stuff like that. So I didn't miss, I missed the, the end, the Michael Jordan hype. So watching the last dance, I was like, I was like, Oh, okay. So he was okay. So now I, now I get it. But like everybody says, Kobe Bryant was my Michael Jordan. You see, you see what I'm saying? Like as someone younger than me, we say, Oh, LeBron is their Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it was just, you know, even when he, you know, his last game, you know, 60 point, I was, you know, somewhere being grown, watching the game, watching, <laughs> was like, yo, I had to put that to the side. I was like, yeah, I got to watch from his last game. And yeah. only Kobe Bryant will score 60 points in his last, in his last game and then have a, like he wrote the script, you know, and it's so much about Kobe um, to me and his mentality. I think for me was, you know, just that whole, like, I want to be the best. And Kobe was overlooked because everybody looked at him as, hey, you're just Shaq, sidekick. You know, you're, you're the next Anthony, you know, you're Penny Hardaway uh, 2.0. You know, I'm just, I'm, yo, I, you know, Penny's good, but he's not in the same stratosphere. You know, and then, when, and then when Shaq went over to Miami, he did it with Dwayne Wade. He got more of that heat, and I was like, okay. So it was just a, a sense of loyalty, a sense of, Fandom, but it was really Kobe's work ethic, man. Kobe's work ethic to always strive uh, to be the very best, no matter what anybody says, um, you know, and and really having that killer instinct. Like, yo, we could be cool. Like, I don't think Kobe was too cool with people in the offseason, right? Mm -hmm. But he was just – he just had that killer instinct on the basketball court. And I think as a young black man, seeing that, like when you enter this world, you need that killer instinct. You need that that chip on your shoulder. And you know, he you know, he provided that um that mystique, that aura of like, oh damn, that's Kobe Bryant. Like you would know Sundays when you watch the NBA, you would you would see like some of these dudes were not ready and they would just look at him in awe and fear. Like they fear Kobe on the basketball court. 
And yeah. I don't think there's too many players in the NBA. They may play, but there's, like, people fear LeBron. I watched LeBron play yesterday against, uh, well, against the Cavs. Like, they were shook. Like, <laughs> he scored 46 points. So, um, yeah, so he's just meant so much to me. Uh, and, you know, more so what – more so when – you know, what he's done outside of basketball, right? Mm -hmm. I think for me, um, you know, the the man he became, like we, like, yo, we saw it, like, we saw him grow up. Then he dated Brandy. Yeah, I mean, we saw him, we saw everything from him. We was kind of, that is something that uh, is interesting that I was going to bring up that we really saw every single level of him from the time that he was drafted um, you know, to the very end. And I bring that up because you, you know, rightfully so everybody is giving him his flowers now, but yeah. we remember those times where it wasn't really like that. Like we remember the times that right after the three P that it was like, you know, he's about to, he's about to go to the wayside. You know, we remember him even during the, uh, his, the MVP season that he got robbed of in, in 06 it was yeah. still speculation, like yo, you know, he can't really win like that, you know, and and he had to chip, he had to chip back to that mountaintop, and it just was like those years was bleak. Like we remember him, uh, like I remember watching Sports Center the morning where he was like, yo, y'all have to trade me, like get me out of here, send me to the club. I was ready to go too. I was ready to go. My bags were packed. I was ready to get out of LA. Send me to the Clippers or send me to the Bulls. Like he said, he yeah. was. He was looking up. He was looking up schools in Chicago and everything. So, like we we saw that too. And I think I think it's important for people to remember that because, like you know, whatever your journey is going to be, uh, especially when you kind of grab it by the, the no pun intended by the bullhorns, the, the yeah. world is not going to love you. You know, continuously throughout the whole thing. You know, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's just important that you leave uh, a body of work that that's essentially undeniable. And then because if it's not, people can't deny it's the work if you get the results. So, you know, yeah. that, that was definitely yeah. something like, that's something I, that, that I get from Kobe. Yo, man, I, and I think you brought a, a good point. One of my favorite commercials of Kobe Bryant was the, um, the you know, the I hate you Kobe Bryant commercial where he had all the former NBA players and, Phil yeah. Jackson, when he was like his last one of his last commercials, where you know all of the teams and fans were sitting there, he was just playing the symphony. I think they called it the symphony, mm -hmm. where he was just kind of playing to the crowd because he they were saying, "Kobe, you suck, you suck." Like people loved to hate Kobe Bryant, right? Mm -hmm. Because he had that killer instinct. He was coming to your town to bust your favorite player in the head, do you know, win the game. He was about winning. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that like it wasn't on some, oh, participation, like, you know, more so that we have in this generation, everybody's friends, stuff like he was about when he had a goal. And I think Max Kellerman of ESPN, he said something very profound. Everybody wanted to be like Mike. Right. Mm -hmm. Every, that was the whole slogan. I want to be like Mike. Mm -hmm. Kobe was the only one who dared to try. Mm -hmm. Right. So like he had that confidence in himself and still in himself. It was like, yo. I don't care how high this mountain is that y'all say it is. I have such a belief and such a grind in my, in my ability as a person, as a man, that I'm going to get there. And he almost got, I mean, he's, he's, you know, five championships to six championships, to, you know, Michael Jordan passed Michael Jordan in points. Like, so he got, you know, he got there, man. So, um, you know, it just speaks to his, his mentality, his work ethic of who he was and how much, um, still to this day, he influences a, a lot of NBA players. He um, inspired the Los Angeles Lakers to a championship last year. All, that was the rallying cry, you know, the, you know, for the Mamba, the Mamba jersey. Um, but, you know, on today, one year ago, you know, we lost Kobe Bryant and we lost uh, those in the plane crash. Uh, me and I played in the, um, in the helicopter, in the helicopter crash. I want to, Ask you, Alan, where were you when you first heard the news? Because I know exact. I remember the exact moment, how everything went down. I just wanted to ask you, where were you when you first heard the news one year ago? Um, I, I was actually, I was at the barbershop. I was actually leaving the barbershop. Um, got a cut. 
left the barbershop, you know, you know, with me leaving the barbershop, I usually charge my phone while I'm in a chair. So, you know, grab my phone, you know, pack up my stuff or whatever. I see it. And I just like put I put my phone back in my pocket. I didn't even I didn't even mention it to my barber. I was so sure that it was fake. I didn't even bring it up. I'm like, I'm not talking about this shit. So I just close it. So, you know, said peace out to my barber. Walking around the corner, you know, walk to the train. So then I'm scrolling. You know, I'm seeing it again. I'm seeing it I'm seeing it again. And then I'm on Twitter and then kind of like it, like everything kind of paused for a little bit. Like it was kind of frozen. Everyone's reaction was kind of the same. It was like, yo, this is, you know, this is not really true. There's, there's no way that this is true. And then, you know, we've, we've seen TMZ kind of like get stuff like this wrong. Not a lot, you know, to yeah. point, but we've seen them get, we've seen it enough times to where it's a possibility that it may not be correct. So, I think probably the next just 45 minutes or so was just me just being like, I'm just looking for a verification of it not being true. So, you know, so after I left the barbershop, uh, you know, just on my way to my next destination, that's when I kind of figured out that's, that's what I, that's when it was kind of confirmed um, that, that, that was true. So that, that's, that's where I was at. I was in Harlem. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, for me, I remember it like it was yesterday. I actually thought about it today. I w- I actually was headed to Houston because I went to it was a Sunday and I actually was like, you know what? I'm gonna go buy tickets and go see my first Royal Rumble, right? WWE Royal Rumble. So I was on my way to Houston to fly to uh, uh, to the Royal Rumble, and so I didn't have my phone. My phone, you know, in the up in the air. You don't get no notifications. Yeah. So I'm up in the air, you know. And so we just landed. And as I just and as we just landed, every you know, everybody starts putting their taking their putting their phones on and stuff like that when you get to the terminal. Mm-hmm. And someone on the plane gasps like <gasps> like this woman. Mm-hmm. She's like, Oh my God, did you hear? And so when she said that, everybody's kind of mumbling, right? On the plane. Mm-hmm. And as she said that, I got tons of text messages from my mother and my sister, right? And so they were like, and so I didn't read their text messages, but you know, of course, you go to Facebook, that's one of the first things, you, you know, you, one of the first things you check social media, and it says, Kobe Bryant has died. And I was like, like you, everybody's, I was in denial, I was like, okay, another hoax, because I think like a week or so before they had said some other celebrity had died, and that celebrity had came out and like, no, I'm not dead, I'm here. And so, uh, Man, I just I, I I remember going to I saw TMZ and then when I saw TMZ I got nervous. I was like, oh okay. And then I saw I think it was the LA Times and the New York Times and then all the articles started rolling in and I'm sitting there watching it and yo, I'm telling you, as I didn't want to be embarrassed, but at that point I guess that I didn't care. Like I started crying right there. I'm sitting in my seat, big as I am. Just my eyes watered and like tears down my down my cheeks. So they let us off the plane. And then I called my sister, my mother, and it's like it was my brother, my older brother, who told uh, my mother was like, Hey, did you did you speak to Ty? And he was like, you know, oh Ty, my government named TJ. And and he was like, Yo, did you he's like, you might want to call him because, you know, Kobe, you know, he Ty, Kobe meant a lot to Ty. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so, man, I, I was on – so I, I went, grabbed my bag, and I just went into, like, a corner outside of the airport, you know, where they pick everybody up, mm-hmm. and I just bawled my eyes out, man. I, I, I literally I, – I, I literally saw, like, a child, like a baby, because it just hurt. Like, I felt like I – like a, a family member passed away. Mm-hmm. Like it was like a piece of me, my childhood, my nostalgia, all that stuff just went, just went away. My sister called me. I just sobbed on the phone and like, I wasn't around family. So I was in, here it is. I'm on this trip mm-hmm. about to go to, you know, my first, I'm ex- so, you know, excited and I get this news and it's just through a, a cloud over the whole experience, man. It was just, mm-hmm. it was so crazy because 
you know, even then when you went, I went to the Royal Rumble that later that day because I was gonna come home. I was like, yo, I'll just get a ticket and come home. But you know, my family decided they were like, you know what, you're you're probably best where you're at because what are you gonna do when you come home? Just sit and soak or whatever. You might as well. I mean, so I have to, you know, it's so funny that you know, I hate to make my grief, you know, this tragedy about my grief. But if I'm giving my testimony, like. I probably was in the best space, mm -hmm. you know, you know, location. I mean, the best location that I could ever imagine to have that sort of news hit me because I, I literally, it hit me so hard. I was, I was so depressed, but to be around wrestling fans and people who are, you know, joyous. And then we went to the arena, everybody's in their Kobe jerseys uh, in Houston. And, and, you know, then I started seeing like how many tributes, you know, and, and, you know, I it hit me that Kobe died, and then there was then the fact that they said that his daughter passed away, and yeah. then there was other. And I want to read off the nine people. So, you know, uh, Kobe Bryant, Gianna Bryant, uh, John. Uh, I want to say Antebelli, Carrie Antebelli, Alyssa Antebelli, uh, Christina Mauser, Sarah Sarah Ch uh, Chester, Peyton Chester, and uh, Arza. Ara, I, I, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it, uh, Zobanya, I believe that's uh, the pilot who who passed away, man. And so it was a very, I remember being at the Royal Rumble and tried to, you know, muster through it, um, but it was just a somber, long or long flight home, and it was just a, a somber, somber day, man. It was just something that I will never forget. It was like the world stood still that day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was like, for me too, it was like um like I just had like a bunch of justification of why like this just couldn't be real. And I just yeah. remember the night before, um, if it was if not the night before, the night within forty eight hours of that. Yes. Uh, LeBron had just passed Kobe in the all time scoring list. Yes. And so it was like, oh, okay. They're doing this whole, like, you know, since Kobe was in a news cycle, like someone's playing a nasty joke since LeBron eclipsed them that, yeah. you know, Kobe had passed. So it was like, it really took me a little while to just even, uh, to, to just come together and come to grips with that. And then I think at the end of the night, um, uh, I, actually at the end of the evening, a couple of hours later, hour or two later, I was like already scheduled to meet up with the homies. And yeah. so, you know, we ended up, Still, you know, still meeting or whatever, and then at least we kind of got the to uh to kick it and kind of just talk about it and and you know share how we was feeling. So that was definitely um, that definitely helped. That definitely helped. But I and then it's like, man, it was just like it's just one of those crazy things for me to and. One one of those crazy things for me, even though I do feel like, of course, he would have gave so much more to, uh, first of all, his family, uh, yeah. but so much to the universe had he still been here. Like I, I thought about Kobe so much with being in the bubble, and then all, you know, all of the players were saying the same thing, like, "Yo, this would be Kobe's bag if he all, mm -hmm. all he had to do was worry about hooping." Um, but you know, I think some people are really sent here to do a mission, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's, it's, I felt like Kobe did that mission with so much uh, excellence and to the highest degree of he can do that mission. It's like, he left it all on the table, you know? So, mm -hmm. you know, just just that's that's kind of like another lesson that, that, that I, ha I have and I keep for myself, just keep it all on the table, uh, continue to do your mission. Um, and it's like he's, of course, he's he's been a myth and a legend prior to all of this, but it's like almost a heightened sense because it's like you got to think, you know, he, he was in his 40s when he's passed. That means that he spent the, the majority of his life in the spotlight being Kobe Bryant. He was, you know, he, he was coming and he was he was overseas and, and, and playing uh, with grown men at like 15, 16 years old. Like he didn't yeah. really know no normalcy. And he's been that since, 
you know, since it, since a youngin. So it's like for him to just kind of keep that level of of hard work and fame and persistence for, you know, um, two hundred percent of his life is just is just something to think about, you know. Yeah, absolutely. For those who are watching, thank y'all for joining us on our on Soapbox Nation Live. We are talking about Kobe, the late Kobe Bryant, the legendary Kobe Bryant, and the and his daughter Gianna, and those who lost their lives one year ago today in the tragedy uh, in Calabasas when Kobe Bryant, uh, the helicopter went down uh, in the in the helicopter crash. Um, yo, man, I just think that when we look back at how people pay tribute to him. Like we said, the, the world stood still. And that just shows you how much of an impact you have, not just as a basketball player. Like when I think about Kobe Bryant, like his basketball is not even in the top three things that I actually think about as far as him being, being a player. Like Kobe was one of those athletes that also spoke out against, you know, social, uh, uh, social justice. So all the summer I was really thinking, like, man, if Kobe was here, like with George Floyd and the NBA and, and the protests and everything, like, oh, that would have been, you know, he would have definitely spoke up because he was one of the, when Colin Kaepernick uh, first took, you know, when he was getting the heat for the national anthem and taking a knee during the national anthem, Kobe Bryant was like, if I was playing, hell yeah, I would take a knee. Like, yeah. it, it was no, it was no hesitation. Like, he just yeah. was Kobe to do his own thing and, 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 to have that type of leader and that voice for us not to have that, you know, um, you know, it was, it was tough, you know, and his daughter, man, his daughter adored, adored him. And I know people talk about and have their own opinions about Kobe Bryant and his personal life, but I looked and watched the, where social media or how it was when Kobe was done with basketball, he was done. He was very secure in who he was in order to, uh, step and step away. But if you listen to any NBA players talk or anything, Kobe was about his family. His family was number one. His daughters, he loved his family, loved his wife. His daughters adored him. Um, Gianna was always around. I honestly think, like, you know, her, her life was cut too short, too, you know, short too soon. But she definitely would have put the, the WNBA on the map. Like, that was – like it was just almost like she was groomed to like take that sport of women's basketball, WNBA, to another level. And like she, you could tell, like even at a young age when she was playing in some of her highlights, that she had that mentality too. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so that's definitely you know a loss, and we don't want to you know miscount any of the other people who uh, who lost their lives, you know, on that day. But when, when we talk about how the world stood still. Like, we got the World Rumble. It's wrestling to stop everything that they're doing to pay tribute to Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. The Pro Bowl was happening that same day in Orlando. Mm -hmm. They stopped everything for Kobe Bryant. Like, he was a global phenomenon. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't just in, in – it was who he was his men, and his mentality, his, the motivation of how he motivated it, you know, it also helped me, his death actually, you know, allowed me to put a lot of things from myself, you know, into perspective. You know, I didn't, I wasn't spending enough time with my family. I gave so much to social justice, to activism, to fighting things locally and wanting to be the very best for my community, for my, for my people, but I was losing myself and I wasn't Secure, and I remember one of his interviews, you know, that I watched. He says, like, you know, basketball is what he does; it's not who he is, mm -hmm. you know. And I think <clears throat> we could learn a lot from the balance that he had. The reason he was on the helicopter, he started using the helicopter, is because he didn't want to miss out on moments with his family. Like he, mm -hmm. L.A. traffic was that horrible that he wanted to cut that he that time he was spending in the traffic, he was missing with his family. And so he used that as a, as a way to spend more time with his family. So that's a testament to who Kobe Bryant was as, as a man. And for him to mentor the Kyrie Irvins, the Kawhi Leonard's, to, these are people who are superstars uh, that the younger generation looks up to them. 
they look up they look up to Kobe Bryant. So, you know, <clears throat> you know, when he did when they did the um, the funeral, the the wake, mm -hmm. um, I think not the wake the uh, the ceremony. I guess with, with the tributes and stuff. I, like, if anybody had a front row seat to the uh, Mamba mentality, it had to be Vanessa Bryant, right? Mm -hmm. Like. The fact that she got up in front of all the a sold out Staples Center crowd and was able to eulogize uh, Kobe Bryant and, you know, speak to, you know, who he was. The fact that he learned, um, what's that name? I forget what song. Like he learned a song on piano just so he could play it for her. Yes. You yes. Know, yeah. That just shows that the man's, you know, his dedication and, and he's he's missed. I actually Kobe's on is on my my screen on my phone. It's something like I don't want. And I was kind of bummed out today. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I felt like do you feel like people today could have did more? I know she uh, Vanessa put out that she didn't want news coverage of the crash, and she really didn't want NBA to do any any big tributes because they're still trying to heal and in mourning. But yeah, for sure. I don't know. I felt like the media coverage could have been a lot more. But I don't know if they're being respectful or people are just, you know, we're living in a time and age where being, people are just over a certain thing. I think, uh, I think it's, I think it's, well, I don't want to say over it, but I, I think that one, it is being respectful. Two, like, I saw a lot of different news outlets kind of doing uh, Kobe tributes in their own kind of way. Um, I do think Vanessa's word definitely holds a lot of weight. Um, yeah. I also do think that, um, like me, honestly, coming into this morning, I told myself I'm not really going to be able to emotionally deal with a lot of Kobe coverage. So even the stuff that I did, like, see yeah. and passing on the timeline, I didn't click on it. I, like, I didn't – I'm still really honestly not there yet to, like, really dive deep into to Kobe coverage, to be honest. So, I, you know, I can even – I can imagine uh, being a content creator, you may have probably – you, you're probably fatigued of that too, right? Just mm -hmm. just coming off of 2020 as a whole. Um, yeah. So I think well, that- Well, it took me a year to do this. I couldn't do it like after he was his funeral. And like yeah. I, 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 I physically, mentally, emotionally could not cover Kobe and his death because it just, I wasn't, I wasn't ready. And I still don't think I'm ready, even mm -hmm. within a year, but at least- I can, you know, kind of verbalize, you know, that day in those moments. So. Mm -hmm. I think it's, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, uh, I think a lot of it is just kind of like, you know, let's make sure that we get an, an acknowledgement, people are doing their acknowledgements, but I think for the most part, it's like, it's kind of, it's kind of a, um, you know, what, what's understood doesn't need to be said too much in this situation right here. I'm sure, you know, we, he has, he will continue to be memorialized. He will continue to be celebrated. Um, you know, it's not a moment that we, that we go by and it's not like he's being forgotten or swept under the rug. So yeah. um, I do think that people were just kind of like slow walking the reality of him not being here even now. So um, yeah, I think that's what it is. Really. Yeah. For, for me, um, like I said, you know, we and we gonna wrap up, but like Kobe Bryant was bigger than basketball. Like he, you know, it, it wasn't. It was more than like you said, bigger than basketball, more than an athlete. You know, the fact that he won an Oscar, the man won an Oscar after he won five NBA championships, which I count as another championship. So he's tied with Jordan, by the way, if because Jordan don't have no Oscars, he ain't got no Oscar for Space Jam. Um, so I do count that as 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 a championship and you know like you you you're right you know there are people that are put on this earth for a purpose and kobe served this purpose and and maybe you know to encapsulate his legacy and his life you know the the i think that's what it you know i think for me with someone who has the last name legacy i think it's perfect like that's what it is to to live a full life and to not just make yourself better or be the best version of yourself, but to make those around you better. And I know that was a knock on Kobe. Oh, Kobe doesn't pass. Kobe doesn't. Pass. Well, well, look at now. Look at how much influence that Kobe Bryant has had on this on this earth 
to so many people, young black men, to women who want who aspire to be, you know, athletes. Kobe was also for equal pay uh, for for women and and spoke out uh, for social justice and 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 really was a testament and gave Michael Jordan his thought. Like he wasn't with the whole who's better, Kobe, Michael uh, comparison because he said. What you get from Michael, you get from him. Like, there is no Kobe Bryant without, you know, Michael Jordan. And so um, the strength of his family uh, to lose to lose Kobe, to lose, to lose a sister, sister Gianna, um, you know, it's a tragedy. And I think if we can learn anything, it's, it's you live a full life by the other lives that you touch. Like, who else in this earth are you making better? And I think that's what I can take away. Like family is number one and who else are you making better and being the ve- best version of yourself, even myself. And you know, some of the things privately, that was kind of the catalyst to that. Like, it was like, okay, you got to be the best version of yourself because there are people that are counting on you. And it was the longevity play for me. It was like, you are doing yourself a disservice if you're not going to put yourself in a position to be here long term. Um, you know, and I'm talking, you know, your health, your mental, your physical health, your mental health, your emotional, your, you know, the, your emotional state. And I think we can't be afraid, especially as men, we can't be afraid to go through that maturation process, right? Mm-hmm. Well, we talked about Kobe growing up in front of our eyes. Like you can't point to Kobe and some of the things that have happened in his past, some of his his adversity that he's been dealing with and how he dealt dealt with the situation and friction with him and Shaq and how they grew from being, you know, teammates to, to bitter enemies, to rivals, to, you know, them squashing the beef, um, you know, before his passing and growing up and realizing, you know, all that shit was silly. Um, you know, we, you know, we have to embrace our maturation process. And I think he did. And the fact that he was able to walk away um, from basketball and be fulfilled and be complete and then still give the world something more um, before he was tragically, you know, taken away from us, I think uh, it's a testament to who he is. And, you know, that's, you know, and I never got to see him play. I never got to. I was always too broke to what you know. Go buy a ticket. Lincoln tickets were out the out of this world prices to go see, you know, yeah. Kobe Bryant. You know, you could even in the bleachers. Like I was like, why am I paying? Why am I gonna pay four hundred dollars to sit in the bleachers to watch Kobe Bryant? Where I got a better seat. You know, I'm gonna be watching the jumbo screen, so I might as well watch my TV at home. But you know, Kobe is. Um, if I was to ever meet him. You know, the first thing, you know, I would say is dear Kobe and just, you know, say thank you. And I think um, thank you for the inspiration. Thank you for, you know, sharing your life, your talents, your abilities with us. Um, and he and he definitely will be missed, my man. For sure. For sure. For sure. Same. Same. I mean, you know, when you when you when you embody um, when you embody hard work, when like people nicknamed you to to mirror hard work mamba mentality um you know that that's that says a lot about who you are as a person because that that transcends sports period not not even just your sport that just transcends sports period so people talk about mamba mentality they're saluting you because of how hard how hard of a worker you are and that's something that's just gonna you know live forever yeah, absolutely. There will only only be one Kobe Bryant. To me, he's the greatest basketball player that's ever lived. That's my opinion. For those who, uh, you know, who think otherwise, you know, kick rocks. But you know, I, like I said, appreciated him, and and I hope, um, you know, every year we look back and we celebrate his life on this day, and not only celebrate his life, but understand and learn to enjoy ours and live ours to the fullest, and and be the best version of ourselves and be and whatever we want whatever goals whatever dreams whatever aspirations you know go get that shit and don't ever let yourself be be denied be relentless in your pursuit of your peak performance like kobe says what he's like what do you want from me like we're kind in the commercial kind us he's like what do you want i got grammys i got number one records what do you want he just was like more more 
more for whatever you want, man. So Kobe Bryant, we love you. Uh, Gianna, we miss you. Uh, to the other victims and their families, our condolences, and as we pray for your, your healing. Uh, and for anybody else who's watching or listening to the Soapbox podcast, if you've, if you've you know, lost someone who's very close to you, let us know. And, and our, our thoughts and our prayers are with you uh, as well. I know that may seem kind of insignificant to just say that, but, you know, we all need an outlet. And, for, and we have all lost, so I can speak for myself, lost people who we're very close to and um, understanding and learning how to appreciate life. So the Soapbox podcast will always will be here to talk about these issues and to give roses where we see fit. So Kobe Bryant is definitely one of them. Like I said, there will be no Soapbox podcast without him. So thank you so much for watching us on uh, Soapbox Nation Live. Um, Make sure you tune in to us with us on Thursdays on Facebook Live and on YouTube Live as we have the whole crew to break down current events. So follow us on um, social media at Soapbox Podcast with 2X. So for you got anything else, Alan? You want anything else you want to plug? You got anything? Cool, cool, cool. All right, y'all. So please thank y'all for watching us on uh, IG Live. We appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all Thursday. For, for Alan York, this is TJ Legacy, Kobe Bryant. You may be gone, but you will never fade away. Peace.